Hi, my name is Aya and you're watching Aya Reads and I'm here to talk about all the books I read in the month of June. So this was not my best reading month. I think in the last week of June, I just was consumed with everything going on with Colleen Ballinger and reading just fell to the wayside. I don't know, I'm kind of like obsessed with the story a little bit. Um, anyway, I'll leave a couple of videos about that down below if you have no idea what I'm talking about, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you will know what I'm talking about. Anyway, moving on from that. In June, I read 12 books, which equates to 4,896 pages. I had one two star, five four stars, and six five stars. Two of them were rereads and yeah, so two of the five stars were rereads. From my challenges, so I have two big challenges that I'm working on this year, which look out next week, I'll have a video all about those challenges. One of them is um, I have a goal set of how many series I wanna finish this year. So I finished one series this month and I wanna read books that are on my shelves that were published before 2014 because chances are that I've had them on my shelf for at least five years, if not more. And I read one book for that challenge. Those are my stats. With my wrap ups, I'm talking about the books um, from least favorite to favorite, um, except my least favorite book is a part of the series I finished and I've read four books for that series. So I'm gonna talk about that series at the very end because that series also had two of my favorite books I read this month. So I'm gonna start with my four stars I read this month. So the first four star I read this month was The Company of Fiends by Catherine Moon. So this book is the second book in her Tempting Monster series. Basically each book follows one woman who has who is basically an escort. So in this book she works at this um, circus. It's basically like humans having sex with monsters on stage. And she's been working there for years and now we follow her while she um, falls in love with five monsters, five, I think. So it's a white choose monster romance. I read the first one, which is The Lady of Rook's Grave Manor and I really enjoyed that one. And this is one of the series I really wanna finish this year. I believe the third one comes out in July, if that's still a thing. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I do have to say, I think I prefer The Lady of Rook's Grave Manor to this one, but I still really enjoyed this book. I enjoyed the relationship she had with her monsters, and I really enjoyed how in this book we really focused on the monsters' relationship with each other as well. We follow one character we met in the first book, and he was kind of done dirty in that book. So we see him fall in love in this book, and like I said, we also, some of the monsters also have relationships with each other, which I really love. I love MMF stuff in, um like poly books or in reverse harems or like white choose romances. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this book and I would actually highly recommend this series if you like white choose, but especially if you love monster books. The next four star book I read is Falling Into Bed with a Duke by Lorraine Heath. This is her first book in the uh, Hellions of Havisham series. And I really enjoyed it. I do feel like this book was, like this series is, was very hyped for me by especially Jen over at the Book Refuge, but I do know that especially the second book is really hyped in that series. But when I went into it, I had high, very high expectations and it fell flat a little bit, mainly because I am a completionist and I like to read series in order. And if there's multiple series, I like to read the series, like the different series in order. And I did not know that the Hellions of Havisham was connected to one of her other series. If I had known that, I wouldn't have started it. Having said that, it didn't, like, it's not that big a deal. Like, you meet some characters, but every time I met a character, I was like, I have a feeling that she's written about them before, which bothered me a little bit because I feel like I would have enjoyed this book way more if I connected to those other characters as well. But anyway, Falling Into Bed with a Duke is about basically the Hellions of Havisham. It's basically about this crazy man who takes in three boys whose parents were killed in a train accident. And we basically follow like his son in the third book and then two of the three boys that who lost their parents. And in this book, we follow one of them. We follow the Duke of Ashbury and he, like I said, lost his parents in a train accident. He's been raised by this crazy man who 
really did love him and he obviously got a bunch of brothers because of that but obviously there's some trauma there there's like he, he's dealing with a lot he hasn't been to his parents house ever since they died because there's a lot of bad memories associated with that place for him but like he needs money he didn't know that like the person who had been has been in charge of taking care of his estates has been doing a bad job doing bad investments enter Minerva Dodger who has basically a giant dowry because her father has a lot of money and she um, considers herself not very pretty but she just she wants to fall in love and she doesn't want a man to want her just for her fortune they meet each other at this place where women are masked and it's basically a place for women and men to just have relations without there being co uh, co very big consequences for the woman for the women and there she actually meets as she obviously she obviously knows who he is because he's not masked and he doesn't know who she is and he loves taking pictures of like female body parts mainly their legs and he's like intrigued by her and especially he loves her legs so he wants to photograph her and in so starts kind of their like relationship where they meet at this club but they also interact outside of it like i said i really enjoyed it i am very excited about the second book um, that book just sounds crazy and very intriguing to me. The next four star read I had was a novella called The Devil's Submission by Nicola Davidson. This is the second book in her Fallen trilogy, which is a series of novellas related to this Fallen club where, and we follow each of the owners of said club. And the second book is about Devil, who he is ashamed of himself because he's, a sub he's submissive, he likes when women hurt him during sex. And he had the, it's basically a second chance romance because he fell in love with, um, I forget her name, with Eliza because he saw this bit of dominance in her, but then her mother convinces, convinces her that what like, the fact that she's dominant is wrong. So when they actually got married, she became this meek, docile woman and he he basically was miserable. So he basically left her at their estate and went basically lived full time at this fallen club and they haven't seen each other in months until she decides to come back and kind of win her husband over. And there she discovers, you know, that he's submissive and what he likes and that they're actually perfect for each other. I really enjoyed it. I love... I love the first one and I really love the second book. And yeah, I just, I really love historical romances and especially love when like it's a little bit more spicy. And my last four star read is On the Island by Tracy Garvis Graves. This is, I'm sure a lot of you have already read it. This book, I read it because it's published before 2014. It was published in 2011 and it has been on my TBR for such a long time and I finally got to it. This is about a woman named Anna. She takes up tutoring um, as like a side job with her teaching position. She's been hired to tutor a kid named TJ who is 16, almost 17 because he had cancer. Now he's, um, he's better, but he has, he lost out on a lot of school. So that's, uh, so his parents hire a tutor to get him caught up before he returns to school after the summer. They decide to like to take her with them when they go on this trip to the Maldives, where they basically will spend their entire summer. So uh, the parents and the sisters, they go on ahead and Anna and TJ, they fly out on their own a couple days later, but their plane crashes and they basically spend years on this island fending for themselves they're all alone and basically eventually they fall in love this is not tab taboo in that he is well over the age of 18 when something does happen i really enjoyed it i do feel like if i'd read it back when i first bought it i would have loved this way more than 
I do now because now I've read a lot of romances and honestly like I don't want to sound like a hoe but I honestly prefer my romances to be a little bit spicier and this was basically fade to black the whole time which there's nothing wrong with that I did really love the story I loved uh, them falling in love I loved the age gap and seeing because eventually they do make it off the island and seeing how society views her um, was very interesting like I said, I really enjoyed it. If you've not read it, I would highly recommend it. But I do have a feeling that a lot of you have already read this book. Now for my five star reads. My first five star was Seduce Me at Sunrise by Lisa Claypest. This is the second book in the Hathaway series by her. And I've just been loving this series. I cannot wait to continue it to continue on. We follow Wynne and Kev. Kev is a Romani boy that the Hathaways took in years ago. He's basically grown up with them and they basically treat him like family, but he's always kept his distance. Even though he could have everything he wanted, he just basically f f took on this role of like caretaker of like their home and things like that. Oh yeah, so the reason he, um, the, Hathaway the Hathaways took him in is because they found him um, just basically almost beaten to death. And uh, year, years later, like a couple years before this story, Wynne had this like, I think it's scarlet fever, I'm not sure, but anyway. And which left her like really weak and very fragile. And she's always, like it's basically pining on both sides because she's always been in love with him, he's always been in love with her. He didn't feel like he was good enough for her. And because of that, he kind of pushed her away all the time which made her, you know, it obviously hurt her. So before the start of this, like the actual story of this book, Wynne um, and Leo, which is her older brother, they go to France so that Wynne can, that she can go to this like experimental place to um, get better. And that actually works. So she comes back and she's um, met somebody in France. So she takes him back to England with her. And that's when Kev realizes that if he doesn't do something about it, she will lose her forever. And a very interesting part in this book is that there's this mystery going on with uh, Kev's her like heritage, like who his parents are, who his family is. I really love this book. Um, I do have a feeling that once I finish this series, this is not going to be my top favorite in the series, but that's fine. Not all of them can be... Um, on top obviously but it's still a five star read i love lisa claypest she has fast become one of my favorite authors and i cannot wait to read the rest of the series and the rest of her books my next five star read was a reread and i read the golden lily by rochelle mead basically if you want to read this book well i mean you can read the bloodline series without having read the vampire academy series but i don't know why you would want to this is basically a spin-off from the vampire academy and in the vampire academy we met adrian and he was in love with Rose, but she was in love with somebody else. So basically we follow him as he falls in love with Sydney in this book, who's an alchemist. And basically alchemists, their job is to um, keep the world of the vampires secret. But they actually despise vampires. And in this book, Sydney is tasked, well in this series, she's tasked to protect this vampire princess. And... Um, so she has to go back to high school, pretend that she's the sister of said princess. And along with that come other vampires um, that she has to interact with. One of them being Adrian. And this book, uh, this is the second book. And yeah, I cannot really tell you a whole lot about this book because it's a continuation. Um, but as far as like the romance goes, um, we do have a little bit of movement in that department, especially from Adrian's point of view. And I do have a feeling that in the third book, some more things actually start happening. So I cannot wait to read this book. This is a comfort book for me. I do feel like as much as I love Adrian, he's one of my favorite characters. I think that the Vampire Academy will be my favorite series out of the two. But, and however, I am really enjoying it. I do have to say some things in this book are pretty dated. And there are some, like from one of my big triggers is weight loss but specifically like diet dieting diet culture and there's like there's a little bit of that in this series because um vampires they are like very like their natural build is very very skinny and sydney since she's a human she physically cannot have that body she constantly compares herself to the moroi in this book and constantly like 
watching her weight and stuff. Well, not constantly, but it is a like it is a thing in this book. And I do have a feeling that it's like those things are less prevalent in the books that I'm reading that are published more recently. But having said that, even though it is a trigger for me, it was fine. But if like maybe it will bother you so keep that in mind if you for some reason have not read the bloodline series and you do want to read it next is laura olympus volume two so i'm slowly making my way through this graphic novel series i know i can read it on webtoons but i've decided to, to just buy the hardbacks and read it that way um this is basically a hades and persephone retelling and i'm really enjoying it it is a slow burn like in this book like you know that they like each other but nothing is really happening i am really enjoying it i love the illustrations even though it's not actually my preferred type of illustrations it's not like the pr prettiest in a way like comparing it to saga and things like that but i'm really enjoying it i love the like the whole color schemes like every god and has like a different color um, so yeah, I re I'm really enjoying it. And if you've not read it yet, I would highly recommend it. And like I said, you can read it on Webtoons and it's free there. So if you don't want to commit to buying, you know, graphic novels can be expensive and you read them very quickly, obviously, then maybe try it on Webtoons first and see if it's something you're interested in. My last five stars before I talk about the series, I completed this month is Stop Secret by Serena Bowen and L. Kennedy. This is a reread for me. For some reason, I was just pretty down this month and I just really wanted to reread a book I had really loved. And the first time I read it was actually in 2023. So I, that rarely happens to me where, even though sometimes I read a book and I'm like, yes, I cannot wait to reread it. I rarely actually do reread it in the year that I read it. But I decided to just reread this book. I really love this one. It is a story about this guy whose girlfriend wants to have a threesome with another guy. So he goes on this app to find said guy. There he meets someone and they start chatting um, online on this app. And while they do, the guy with the girlfriend starts, you know, discovering his sexuality a little bit more, finds out that maybe he might be bi. Until the moment they actually meet each other and find out that they're actually... Um, like fraternity brothers and they live like they're they live in the same house and they hate each other <laughs> i love keaton and i love luke especially um this does deal with a little bit of cheating i mean it kind of is because keaton is with his girlfriend while he has like sexually explicit conversation conversations with luke um it didn't bother me too much even though I hate reading about cheating in books because it was kind of obvious from the beginning, you know, that maybe Keaton um, hasn't discovered his sexuality fully yet. I really enjoyed it. If you've not read this one, I would highly recommend it. And yes, I have not read Him and Us yet. And I really should. Okay, so last but most certainly not least, let me actually put them in order here. I read most of, oops, <laughs> the Kingmakers series by Sophie Lark. So I read The Air in May and I, my goal was to read one of them a month. And after I read The Rebel, I could not stop. So I read The Rebel, The Bully, The Spy, and the savage so let me just go through them in order so the rebels the second book in the kingmaker series so the kingmakers by sophie lark is a um spin-off from her brutal birthright series and um, a couple books from her underworld series and you follow the children of the main characters we followed in those series it's a mafia series and in this series they go to this kingmaker school it's basically a hogwarts for mafia kids where you can be sorted into four categories, the heirs, the spies, the accountants, and the um, enforcers. Do have to read these books in order, and I would highly, highly recommend you actually read the entire Brutal Birthright series, plus the first two books in the Kingmaker, in the Underworld series, before you even start with the heir. Um, so yeah, it is a big commitment, but I would 
it, I do think it's definitely worth it, especially because some of these books are my favorite books I read this year. Anyway, The Rebel, we follow Miles Griffin, who is the son of Ada and Callum, who we met in um, like the first book in the Brutal Birthright series, Brutal Prince. And he falls in love with Zoe Romero, which we've met her in the first book, The Heir, and she was engaged to this sick, sick psycho um, named Rocco. And he basically, his goal in life is to make her life miserable and basically torture her and Nobody does anything because she like kind of belongs to him. So Miles sees that and he, like I said, he falls in love with her and basically his goal is to save her from this and like make her his. Um, in these books, we also always follow a third perspective. Well, not always, but at least in the first three, we also follow a third perspective. And in this book, the third perspective is Cat Romero, uh, Zoe's sister which she's going to be the main character in the next book. This book I gave four stars. I did really like it and I enjoyed it more than The Air, which I gave three stars. I felt like this book focused more on the romance than The Air did. But Zoe and um, Miles, they were not my like favorite characters. Obviously, I felt bad for Zoe and I wanted what was best for her. But I just, I don't know, like they were just like Miles, as much as I love his parents, his, he, him, I just, I didn't feel very connected to but I did really enjoy it and after I finished it I had to continue on with the bully because something happens in the rebel um okay anyway let me just go back a little bit in the air we meet Leo Gallo who's the son of uh, the couple in the sixth book in the Brutal Birthright series where a lot of things happened and a lot of things are set up for the Kingmakers. So Leo's parents are Sebastian Gallo and uh, Yelena Yenin. And in that book, something happened to with Yelena and especially her brother. It's just like bad blood. So in this book, we follow Leo's cousin. So we follow Yelena's brother's son. <laughs> So we follow Dean. Dean hates Leo. He hates Leo's family. In fact, in the first book, he actually tried to kill Leo. And basically this book is a Draco redemption arc. It's basically like a Draymine fan fiction in book form, which I love. I love Draymine. I love Draco Malfoy. I do feel like if Harry Potter was like some sort of like young adult romance novel, she, Hermione would have 100% ended up with Draco in my opinion. So in the second book, Dean sees Kat do something and he basically blackmails her. So he tells her that she's his for the month, basically his sex slave and he can do whatever he wants with her. And she agrees because she wants him to keep the secret, but she's also intrigued by him. And it basically becomes like a dubious consensual relationship or a consensual non-consent because and like, I don't feel like in any of the sex scenes, she doesn't want to do them. And during that month, they actually start to fall in love with each other. I really enjoyed this book. This is one of my favorite books I've read. Um, I felt like it was set up perfectly. Yeah, and I just, I really fell in love with Dean and Kat in this book. It was such, such a good book. I would highly recommend it. But like I said, like you have a long way to go before you can actually read this book. I don't feel like it will hit you the same way if you just start with this one. But I gave this book five stars and it was definitely, I do like, I this is definitely my favorite out of all of them. And it might actually be, be my favorite Sophie Lark. Next, The Spy, which I cannot tell you anything about this one. It's basically a culmination of everything we read in the, First three books in the bully, the third perspective we follow is the spy and we don't know who this person is. And we this book is basically their story falling in love with someone else. Like I said, I cannot tell you anything about this book, but I also gave this one five stars. Last and unfortunately least, and I'm very sad I'm ending this month, like this video on a downer because usually my wrap ups, I really wanna like talk about my favorite book last, but since I decided to talk about this series last, it's The Savage by Sophie Lark. This one, I gave two stars. 
I do not feel like this book is necessary at all. And um, okay, basically you follow Sabrina Gallo, who is Nero and Camille's daughter. And you follow her falling in love with someone who, who I actually cannot talk about either. Um, there was a scene in The Spy, actually, um, and Sophie's fans asked her to write their love story. So unless you are, like, if you if you read The Spy and you're also one of those people, like, you know, I really want to read about Sabrina, then definitely read this one. I was not. I was like, I was fine with just the story arc ending with The Spy, but I was like, you know, she wrote it. I might as well read it. I didn't really enjoy it. I feel like Sabrina is not a type of hero heroine that I love. She's um, just, she, even though she's supposed to be smart, she does a lot of dumb things out of impulsivity. And I just, I cannot handle that. Um, there's a lot of drugs, a lot of sex with drugs in this, while high on drugs in this book, which normally I, I doesn't really bother me, but in this book somehow it did. By the end, I just, I didn't care about it. And I know a lot of people, um, one of the reasons why they don't like this book is they felt like the main male character had to grovel, which I feel like you either should have grovel from the hero or like if, if like it's the hero that did something wrong, either the hero should grovel or the, uh, the heroine should get her revenge. And in this book, Sabrina got her revenge and in spades and it did make me uncomfortable because she went so far beyond the line that she couldn't even see the line. So no, like I just, I, I didn't enjoy it. And I, mostly I just, I didn't feel like this book was necessary. Like the Kingmakers was supposed to be a four book arc. And I feel like Sophie should have left well enough alone. And this book, it's just like, it didn't like if I'm, even though I gave the air three stars, I did see the, like it was necessary to tell the rest of the books. Whereas with this one, it was just like an added book that didn't provide a whole lot of, things in my opinion i'm sorry if you love the savage i just didn't <laughs> anyway um so those were all the books i read in the month of june definitely let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were also let me know your favorite book that you read in the month of june my favorite was definitely let me just grab it again i really 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 love this one um yes like I said, definitely leave all your thoughts in the comment section down below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.